Thank you, Hella. It is a great pleasure to be introduced by you, and thank you for the generous introduction as well. Um, Hella didn't mention that uh, this column that you referred to actually was started by Hella, uh, who gave me the opportunity years ago, I think about uh, 1999, to begin writing my column for the Washington Times, and is now syndicated, so I want to thank you for that. And that's how far back we go. <laughs> um, I don't normally read from my own work. I'm not a poet, I'm not an actress, but I do want to read because of where we are right here at the foot of the Capitol and a stone's throw from Union Station. I would like to read just the, just the opening paragraph of my introduction to my book, which is called The Beginning. And you'll see why in a moment. Sometime in 1934, two men got off separate trains at Union Station in Washington, D.C. They had arrived in the nation's capital to fight on different sides of a war. It was a war few Americans knew, or even now know, was raging all around the capital. One man in his early 30s had come to expand the reach of the secret communist apparatus already entrenched inside the U.S. government. The other man, age 60, had come to expose it. The name of the younger man was Whitaker Chambers. Later, he would become the most famous ex-communist to bear witness to the conspiracy he had served. The older man, William A. Wirt, would die in obscurity. Now, of course, we are right a stone's throw from Union Station, and indeed, as I came through this morning, um, I thought of this, this vignette. I always do. These two men, they, they arrived in Washington um, on different days, the same season, it seems, early, the first half of 1934. And the two vignettes here, uh, one of the conspirator on one hand, and the man who came to expose the conspiracy, um, in many ways set up the thematic structure of my book. Um, in one sense, the book is really a story of 20th century American history told from the vantage point of trying to sort out the conspirators and those who would expose the conspiracy, the people who suppressed the facts and the people who were trying to bring them into the open. And I would start by saying that to date, to date, it is the conspirators, it is the conspirators that have won, um, which makes, I think, makes our claims of victory in the Cold War quite questionable. Just think of the Marxist occupation of practically every college campus in America and try to reconcile that with notions of Cold War victory. And as for those I call the truth tellers in my book, it is my hope that this book does at least bring them some long overdue recognition. It is these patriots who are the inspirational core of what is, yes, very much a dark tale. To date, these, these, these people have these Americans and some foreigners have really been paved over and forgotten for the most part by the history that has been written, yes, by the victors. I would include among these, just to give you an example of some names that I, I doubt are too familiar necessarily, Major George Racy Jordan, who in 1949 and 1950 testified on the Hill before Congress as to the transfer of atomic materials to the Soviet Union during World War II. <clears throat> which is a story most of us have not heard. Another one would be the great journalist Julius Epstein, who brought to, triggered congressional investigations by about, again, about 1950, 1951, uh, to assess, to analyze, to codify the guilt of the Soviet Union in the Katyn Forest Massacre, which to date had officially been accepted by the United States government as a German war crime. So this was also very important. Uh, I would also include in that group a very notorious name, but Senator Joe McCarthy. These are the truth tellers, the investigators, people trying to get their hands around this conspiracy that for the most part has been successfully hidden, hidden away from us. And when you start looking at our history in terms of this divide or struggle, really, war between the truth tellers or those who would like to reveal more of what's going on and, and those who are trying to suppress the story, it changes our, I think it should change, change mine, assessment of both World War II and the Cold War, which are, of course, the dominant American events uh, in the 20th century. And I would just say this, uh, mentioning that I am the daughter, I say this as the daughter of a proud veteran of World War II, 
my late father, Elliot West, walked ashore onto Omaha Beach on D-Day plus two, and he would go on to fight across Northern Europe. Um, he would end up actually just over the German line in a beautiful, beautiful little town, or near a beautiful little town called Monschau. And this would be toward the end of 1944. And it was not long before that, or not long after he got there, that he, still wearing his summer issue uniform of summer in Normandy, became quite ill, got a very high fever, and was pulled off the line. And it wasn't long after that that the Germans mounted their, their last breakout, which we know as the Battle of the Bulge. And the group my father was attached to in that vicinity suffered grievous casualties. And it is one of the more controversial claims of my book, which I understand is quite controversial, that perhaps D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge would not have been necessary, would not maybe even have happened, had it not been for the communist penetration of our war strategy making mechanisms, the chain. Indeed, I, I came to the conclusion that the war itself might have ended much earlier than 1945. A date that made sense to me as I sifted through this evidence was as early as 1943, which of course is before most of the tens of millions of people who died in the war in Europe had died, and before most of those cities in Central Europe had turned to rubble, and significantly also before the Red Army of Stalin had broken out of Russia. So these are some of the, the, the framework of, of what I'm looking at. But it, it was not what I set out to do with this book. I had no idea I would be taking this journey through history. I, I, had no idea it was there to take, to tell you the truth. 